Good morning, I'm Chris Roof, the lead pastor at Peace Tree United Methodist Church. We thank you so much for joining us this morning on our online worship service. If you're watching this video from Facebook, we hope you'll consider sharing it so that your friends will see it in their newsfeed. Also, don't forget to message us later today with a picture of your family worshiping from home. We love to see how everybody is doing. We want this time to be a chance for all of us to gather together as a faith community online so that we can uh, be able to keep up with each other to see how everyone is doing. So we want you to go ahead and say hello to others in the chat. Be active during the course of this worship service. Say hello. Uh, maybe you'll see some friends log on. Welcome them to the online premiere and enjoy this time of worshiping together in a casual, comfortable way. We invite you to sing the songs that we're going to be hearing over the course of the next hour. Uh, sing them at home or simply let the words of these songs be your prayer for this morning. But uh, as we move now to a time of singing, a time of music and worship, we hope that you'll be in an attitude of prayer and that you'll join your hearts and your minds as we worship God now. Explode and bring the dead to life. Love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. Love so bold to bring a revolution somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom. In this world I'll overcome. My God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside roaring like a lion god's not dead he's surely alive he's living on the inside roaring like a lion he's roaring he's roaring he's roaring like a lion let hope arise and make the darkness hide Faith is dead, I need a resurrection somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom. In this world I'll overcome. My God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. He's roaring, he's roaring, he's roaring like a lion. He's roaring, he's roaring. Roaring like a lion, 
God's not dead, He's surely alive. He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God's not dead, He's surely alive. He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God's not dead, He's surely alive. He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. He's roaring, He's roaring. He's roaring like a lion. He's roaring. He's roaring. He's roaring like a lion. Our thanks to Tim Brewster, the worship leader here at Peace Tree. If you're interested in recording some music, singing, uh, playing an instrument, anything along those lines, then get in touch with Tim. And we are editing together these songs that we're sharing each and every week. You can also reach out to us. At this time, though, we hope that you will check in on Facebook or that you'll tag Peace Tree UMC in your Instagram story or your Instagram post. Every month, we have partnered with the organization Causely, which has partnered with nonprofit organizations. And thanks to that partnership, Every check-in this month is going to help provide emergency supplies throughout the United States through the nonprofit organization Convoy of Hope. Convoy of Hope is responding to the COVID-19 pandemic to help those in desperate need. They've committed to provide at least 50 truckloads of emergency food and water. That's approximately 2 million pounds of relief supplies to people who are most affected by the coronavirus. If you want to learn more about Convoy of Hope, you can check them out at convoyofhope.org and be sure to check in with the hashtag COVID-19 relief to let others know about this month's cause. We hope you'll join us this Thursday for our dial-in prayer call. We do this every week at two o'clock central time. It's an opportunity for us to hear one another's voices, to hear scripture and prayers for the day, and then to also lift up the names of people and places and situations that have been on our hearts and minds. The number to call if you're interested in joining this Thursday's dial-in prayer call is 408 418-9388 and the access code is 624-377-228. And this Wednesday night we hope that you will join us for our Facebook live online Bible study that we will do through a live stream. Uh, It's going to go hand in hand with today's scripture passage. We are going to share more information this week with ways that you can watch a video session in preparation for this Wednesday's online Bible study. And that video session is going to come from the author of the book, Acts Catching Up with the Spirit. But for now, we hope that you will set a reminder for yourself that you'll mark it on your calendar this Wednesday at 7.30 Central for our online Bible study on Facebook Live. Thanks again for worshiping with us online this morning. We are continuing to celebrate the Easter season with our friends and family, with our online community, and we hope that you will like and share this video so that maybe your friends will see it in their newsfeed and decide to join us. It's an easy way to invite your friends to church. Now, let's continue worshiping God. Let's continue saying hello to our friends and our neighbors in the chat, and let's listen to the song now. Worthy 
is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, you are holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, Amen. As you just saw in that video, there are multiple ways that you can support our online ministry at Peace Tree. If you're watching right now from a computer, we hope that you'll open up a new tab or window and visit us at peacetree.church slash give. If you're watching from a phone, then maybe later you can text the word peace to 77977 and then follow the link in the reply. It's a fast and secure way uh, where you can give online. And lastly, if you prefer to mail in uh, your tithes or your offerings by check, then mail it into our church building, 9315 East Shelby Drive in Carnival, Tennessee, 38017. Uh, right now, we're going to continue worshiping God, but we do thank you for your consideration. We thank you for your support of our online ministry, and we invite you to continue worshiping with us now. And 
just a moment we're going to have a children's message from our children's minister miss connie uh, i will say that we love seeing all of the easter pictures that came in from our families this week seeing the kids uh, in their pjs worshiping from home or even dressed in their sunday best worshiping from home it's been wonderful being able to keep up with y'all that way so keep sending in those pictures of your family as you have church uh, in your living room or at the breakfast table it's been great to see y'all now if you have children if you want to get them around the television set right now for our children's moment, then go ahead and gather them around. We're going to hear from Miss Connie right now. Good morning. I'm Connie Jackson, Children's Director of Pastry. Thanks for joining me for children's time this morning. Good morning, Pastry Kids. Today I bought a book with me and it's called Fun Facts, Ripley's Believe It or Not, Kids and Silly Stories. It has some strange facts in it that are hard to believe even when you do see them. Let me list a few for them for you. Goats can climb trees. There are goats in Morocco who climb trees because they like to eat the fruit that they find there. Male gorillas can eat over 40 pounds of grass, leaves, and roots in one day. That's the same as you eating 500 bags of potato chips in one day. I hope you aren't eating that much while we're in this home staying safe. A spotted skunk often does handstands before it squirts its stinky spray. Its spray can reach up to 15 feet, so I advise you to run if you see a skunk doing a handstand. Honeybees have hair on their eyes. I wonder if they have to brush their eyes with a hairbrush. 
And last but not least, sea turtles visit underwater cleaning stations to have algae removed from their shells and body. Schools of fish, such as yellow fangs, clean up the turtles and send them on their ways as good as new. I'd like a car wash like that right now because my car needs a good cleaning after all the pollen they're falling this time of year. I hope you enjoyed my book and my pictures, believe it or not. I think we've all probably heard someone say, I'll have to see it to believe it. Those pictures and facts I've just shared with you are hard to believe even when you do see them. Today our Bible story is about someone who wouldn't believe what they were told until they had seen it with their own eyes. In the book of John, chapter 20, it tells us that on the evening of the first Sunday after Jesus was crucified, his disciples were together in a locked room. They were afraid that those who had crucified Jesus would also want to put them to death. Suddenly, Jesus appeared there in the locked room with the disciples. It was hard for the disciples to believe, but when Jesus showed them the wounds in his hands and his side that he had suffered while on the cross, they knew it was him. One of the disciples, whose name was Thomas, was not with the other disciples when Jesus appeared to them. When they told Thomas that they had seen Jesus, Thomas did not believe them. Thomas had seen Jesus crucified on the cross and buried in a tomb, so he didn't believe Jesus could be alive. Thomas said in verse 25, First, I must see the nails in his hands, and I must put my finger where the nails were. I must put my hand in his side. Only then will I believe what you say. A week later, the disciples were in the locked room again, and this time Thomas was with them. Again, Jesus came and stood among the disciples. It tells us in verse 27 through 29 that Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas fell on his knees and answered Jesus, My Lord and my God. Thomas believed. In verse 29, this is what Jesus said to Thomas. Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still have believed. You know what? I've never seen Jesus with my own eyes. All of you listening to me today have never seen Jesus with your own eyes. So my question to all of you is this. Will you be a doubter? Or will you be one of those who Jesus said were blessed because they believed? even though they have not seen. My prayer for you today is that you believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on the cross and rose from the tomb to cover your sins so that you might have the gift of eternal life. Now let's pray. I'm going to say our prayer and ask you to echo the words back to me. Dear God, help us to believe in our hearts what we read in our Bibles, even though we haven't seen them with our own eyes. Amen. As we're ending our children's time this week, I'd like to ask the Peace Your Kids and families and all those watching today to reach out this week and share your faith and belief in Jesus by showing God's love to all those around you. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Thank you, Miss Connie, for that children's sermon for our Peace Tree Kids. Uh, parents, don't forget, we do have a Facebook group for you and for other families. It is Peace Tree Families. It's a chance for you to check in with other parents uh, to just be able to swap stories and to help uh, each other out as we live through this time of quarantine at home. Uh, but at this point, we are going to hear our scripture lesson for today, coming to us from Mrs. Courtney Geary. Our Bible reading for today comes from Acts chapter 1 verses 3 through 11. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, 
and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the way as you saw him go into heaven. May God bless the reading and hearing of God's holy word. You heard me share earlier in our video this morning that we are using a new book for our online Bible study this Wednesday night. We'll be using Acts Catching Up with the Spirit by Matthew L. Skinner, and it's also the book that's helping to help guide us uh, this this morning and, and over the, the course of the next six weeks for our Sunday morning services. Uh, today is going to be the beginning of a new six-week series that I'm calling The Acts of the Apostles. Each Sunday, we'll build upon the last, so be sure to tune in next week. If you can't make the premiere of the video, then that's okay, because all of our worship videos are going to be archived online on our website at peacetree.church and also on our YouTube channel and, and right here as well on Facebook. All of those videos are, are going to be able to be replayed and rewatched. But if you do get to watch at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings, then interact with us in the chat. Say hello to your friends. As you see people log on, welcome them to our video premiere. Uh, and remember, of course, to like and share and uh, say hello. Now, let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day and for this morning and the chance to gather together as your people, as a faith community online. I ask that you would be with us now as we continue uh, to hear the Easter story, as we continue to see what happened with those early disciples and apostles in the days after Jesus' resurrection, in the days after his ascension. And I pray, Lord, that the words I would preach would not be my own, but that they would truly be yours. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. So friends, I have to ask uh, right now, how many of you like sequels? Uh, now, this could be a sequel to a book. Uh, maybe it's, it's in a, a book series that you have enjoyed picking up, and, and it's a, a sequel to a book that you love. I, I remember hearing recently that uh, there was a sequel, there was a follow-up book to the literary classic To Kill a Mockingbird. There actually was some controversy around the family releasing that book. Uh, so I'm interested, if you want to get in the chat and let me know, have you read Go Set a Watchman by Harper Lee? I have not read that yet, but would be interested to hear about that literary novel sequel to To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, but then there's also some books that would make the, the jump in their sequel to the stage. Uh, there are a lot of Harry Potter fans that have read all of the Harry Potter books, uh, and then the follow-up to that was a stage production, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So uh, that that uh, stage play was was put uh, into book form for for people to be able to read the script, but uh, but that was a sequel that made the jump from a book to the stage. Now, for me and for most people, typically when we think of sequels, we're thinking about movies, right? Uh, and and honestly, most of the time, the sequel does not live up to the original. Now, there, I'm going to mention some some of these I've seen, some of these I haven't seen. Uh, to me, a great classic, especially when I think of summer and when I think of baseball, right, I know that there are a lot of people this past week were thinking about uh, opening day for baseball and throwing out the first pitch. Uh, I think about the Sandlot. Uh, it wasn't until I, I think I was walking through Target or Walmart one day and I saw uh, in the video bin Sandlot 2 and, and I thought to myself, there's no way uh, that that's as good as the first. And I, I confess, I have not seen The Sandlot 2. If you have, let me know. Uh, but I, I can't imagine that it's anywhere near as good as the original. Uh, there are some sequels that I've seen that I feel like not as good as the original. Ghostbusters 2. All I remember was that like the, in the movie poster, it, it had the ghost like holding up a peace sign uh, for number two. Uh, yeah, again, to me, not as good as the first Ghostbusters. Who, who, what can beat the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man? Uh, my wife uh, pointed out to me earlier this week a, a movie musical that did not live up to the first. And I, I know that there are some people that love this one. And you can let me know uh, again if, if you've seen this. Uh, of course, I'm talking about the Michelle Pfeiffer-led uh, Grease 2. Right? N there's no way it's it was going to live up to what uh, Danny Zuko and, and Sandra D uh, was, was able to put on the film for the very first Grease. But I, I have seen Grease 2. 
uh, I, I don't think it's as good. But uh, there's 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 also this one. I don't know why this one popped into my head as I was thinking about movie sequels. Uh, maybe it's just the title, Legally Blonde 2, uh, Red, White, and Blonde. Never seen it. Don't know if it's good. Let me know if you've seen it. Is it, is it good? I haven't even seen the first Legally Blonde. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll get some hate for that. I've never seen that. Reese Witherspoon is wonderful. Let me know what you think of those sequels. Uh, there are the sequels that that sort of kind of beat the curse, the sequel curse, and they end up maybe being more beloved than, than the original. I know in Star Wars fandom, uh, there are people who love The Empire Strikes Back, and they'll say that The Empire Strikes Back is, is more interesting, that the themes are better, that uh, the direction it goes in is a better story than the original 1977 uh, Star Wars. If uh, there are Disney fans that uh, have enjoyed getting on Disney Plus over the last few weeks, uh, Check out The Rescuers Down Under. Many would say that The Rescuers Down Under is better than the original uh, The Rescuers. Uh, and then there, there's also uh, right all of our, our gangster film aficionados that will point out that The Godfather Part 2 is better than the original, but, but don't bother with Part 3. Right. Uh, so why am I talking about sequels? Uh, well, s sequels are typically the continuation of a story. It, it, they you know, sometimes they get made to because the there's a movie company that wants to to earn more money. Uh, but but sometimes they get made because uh, the the original author, the creator, the director, uh, the screenwriter believes that there's more story to tell. Uh, and, 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 and here we are on the second Sunday of Easter, right? The last Sunday was Easter Sunday, but that was the first Sunday of the Easter season. And here we are on the second Sunday of Easter, and, and there's more story to tell, right? Because the Easter story, God's story, doesn't end on Easter morning. There is, there is more for us uh, to, to, to learn about Jesus and those, those early disciples. And and, you know, it's also important for us to note that this Sunday is typically uh, when when the world is, is as it should be, uh, the, the least attended in-person worship service, the, the Sunday following Easter Sunday. And, and to me, it's a shame because, like, the story doesn't end. But, but if, again, if this was a typical year, you would have seen local churches, like, pulling out all the stops for Easter Sunday. There would have been you know, huge uh, orchestras or just really big music. There would have been a lot of community events uh, surrounding the Easter holiday, and, and not to mention maybe some added worship services uh, that would have been held during Holy Week in the lead-up to Easter Sunday. And so an outside observer might look at Christianity, might look at this religion, at, at our community of faith, and say, well, that's it. Like, that's the end of the story. There's nothing else to talk about after Easter Sunday, Jesus rose from the, the dead, and, and that's it. But that's just not the case, right? Jesus did defeat death on Easter, but then he spent a period of 40 days appearing to his disciples, eating with them, teaching with them, uh, opening up their minds to Scripture, and, and how he is the fulfillment of all that came before. And after he spent his time with them, he ascended into heaven and he entrusted the care of the church to Peter and to the apostles and to those early Christian followers. And that's where the story continues, right? That, and that's what we're going to take a closer look at. It's, we're looking at the sequel. We're going to look at the continuation of the, the Jesus story, of the Easter story, and what happens with the Acts of the Apostles, right? So we're going to be diving into the Acts of the Apostles, observing Peter and those original disciples of Jesus. We're going to be meeting Paul, who was a Jewish convert and a missionary, and we're going to discover all of the places where the gospel was introduced and proclaimed. So I invite you to come back uh, every week as we see the continuation of Jesus' story lived through the life of his apostles. Uh, so think of the book of Acts as a sequel to the Gospels. And, and in fact, it was written by the same author who wrote the Gospel of Luke. So it really is part two in many ways of what we see in the Gospel stories. In Luke's Gospel, we see the power of God the Son, right? The incarnate, the divine in human flesh. He was the anointed one. He is the redeemer. And when we turn the page and we begin reading Acts, we see the power of God, the Holy Spirit, the divine that dwells inside each of us, right? The breath of God 
that fills our nostrils, the wind from God that blows and that moves forward into the future that sustains our lives. Acts picks up after the Easter story, right? It picks up after the 40 days of Jesus appearing to his disciples, and, and it really picks up immediately following his ascension uh, atop the Mount of Olives. And, and it starts in Jerusalem. Right? It's a place that we've just spent a couple of weeks when, as we've entered the passion of Jesus uh, through our last study and sermon series. Uh, we're back in Jerusalem now. They had recently been there. The disciples had recently been there for that Passover festival. right? And now they're back for another festival, a harvest festival that's known as Pentecost. And those early followers of Jesus are surrounded once again by people from all over the world. And, and they're representing these different ethnicities. They're speaking uh, different languages. They've come to gather there uh, for this harvest festival known as Pentecost. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God comes and it fills up the apostles and they start testifying. They start preaching in a multitude of languages so that every person there could could hear about God's goodness. And Jesus, right, had just ascended outside of the walls of Jerusalem up on top of the Mount of Olives, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, a miracle takes place in Jerusalem in Jesus' name. And so here's the thing to remember about the disciples, right? They're not superheroes, right? They haven't been uh, blasted with gamma rays. They can't uh, wield the, the power of lightning through a hammer called Mjolnir. They don't fly around in uh, an iron suit, or, and they haven't been injected with super serum, but they've been filled with the power of God's Holy Spirit, right? They, they have the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that hovers over the waters of creation, the same Spirit that Jesus sends down at Pentecost, that is what is empowering them, and that is the same spirit that surrounds us even today. The apostles were called to spread the good news, to bear witness, and to preach God's message. Jesus actually says to them, and we, we see it in today's passage that Courtney read for us, you will be my witnesses. And, and they're told to preach in Jerusalem and in the surrounding country. They're even told to go into enemy territory, but ultimately they're told to be Jesus's witnesses all over the world. And so you may be thinking, that sounds great. That's awesome. That's so lovely for them that they got to do that, to be the first disciples and to, and to live out that call. It's, we're great. We're grateful. We're so happy that they did that. That's such a tall order. We're glad that Jesus is not calling us to do that. <laughs> but friends, you and I have been baptized into the same community of faith as those early disciples. We have been covered by the same baptismal waters and we have been baptized by the same fire of that Holy Spirit. And so their instructions are our instructions. We are called to be Jesus's witnesses and to preach his word where we live and in our land and in places where maybe we would not be welcomed. But ultimately, we're called to preach Jesus' good news and to take the gospel message and to be his witnesses all over the world. So how are we supposed to preach the miracle of Easter and share what God has done in our lives, especially given our current circumstances? Well, I think for each of us, the method is going to look different. I can almost guarantee you that with our current reality, each of us is going to need to get creative. So uh, for some of us, that might mean sharing uh, passages of scripture uh, by, uh, with, with you know, sidewalk art, using chalk, or, or, or sharing messages of, of positivity and hope and love uh, with, with individuals, or making handmade cards and sending them to maybe some of our friends that uh, are at assisted living homes or some of our family members that, that live far away or maybe felt as though they've been far away from God and they haven't been a part of the faith community in some time. Or, or maybe it's sending meals uh, to hospitals, especially to those that are on the front lines and, and trying to, to battle against uh, this virus. It, it might be speaking uh, that type of language and being that type of witness by sharing God's love in those ways, right? Because Peter and the first disciples, like they spoke a lot of different languages, and, and those were a lot of different tongues that people could understand uh, as they were gathered there in Jerusalem for Pentecost. Uh, but but what language would you speak today, right? 
I think about relationship tools that I use with couples as I do pre-marriage counseling, and one of the tools that we use are, are the five love languages. And, and so I, I was thinking about the five love languages as, as maybe not a dialect that someone could speak, but it is a language that you or I could speak to somebody in order to preach God's word to them or in order to be a witness to Jesus. And so your language may be spending quality time with the people that you love, or it may be building up people uh, with words of affirmation, or maybe you serve others and you give of your talents. Uh, Maybe you communicate with others uh, through an art, um, maybe by painting or by acting or by playing an instrument. Peter and his disciples used all these different languages and they witnessed to thousands, right? Thousands of people that were there in Jerusalem after Easter Sunday on the day of Pentecost. So which language, friends, are you going to use? Because right now you're watching this worship video online. You have access to thousands of people, there are ways for you to share God's love and to be a witness to Jesus with thousands of people right now. This week, this day, how are you going to preach God's word and what language are you going to use? When we consider Jesus' words at the beginning of Acts, again, he says, you will be my witnesses. We need to stop and think about the implications of those instructions, right? Because to be an eyewitness, it means that you have to talk about what you have seen. Now, for those first disciples, it's, pre it's pretty clear, right? They actually saw Jesus with their own eyeballs, like they saw all the miracles that he did. It didn't always make sense to them. They didn't always completely understand it or get it, but that's what they talked about. They, they talked about what they saw Jesus do right in front of them. Well, here's the thing. Because of Pentecost, because of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is still at work in our lives, right? Again, the story doesn't end on Easter morning. It continues now into Acts. It continues now into the year 2020, in the year of our Lord. We don't physically have Jesus here with us, but we know that he's continually, continuing to live with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I'd like for you to consider how would you talk about God to somebody? Now, for some of us, we, we think about God as a parent, right? You might think about God as a mother, right? a mother who comforts and cares for her children. Or you might think of God as a father who directs and, and guides us throughout lives, as a parent who just watches over us and, and has dreams for us, dreams for their children that they, that they want to live out. Or maybe when, when you talk about God or you think about God, you would think about God as your brother, right? The brother that we have in Jesus Christ, right? Uh, he was born. He was born in this world. He was a carpenter's son. He grew up to be a teenager who got lost on a family vacation in the capital, right? He grows up to be a man who fed and who taught and who, who led and inspired and healed and ultimately died for us and really, ultimately, was resurrected for us. He overcame death for us. And so that was our brother. That was Jesus, our friend. But maybe you also think about God as spirit, as energy that's flowing through you and, and all living things and connecting all of us in this web of, of friendships and, and relationships, empowering us to do good works, giving us the words to say, the language to speak when we are speechless, strengthening us for trials, right? Maybe trials that we're experiencing right now opening up our minds to the Holy Scriptures. Maybe you've experienced God as spirit. And, and, and think back to a week ago, right? The story that we told on Easter Sunday. We saw that Mary Magdalene, she was a witness, right? She is a witness to the empty tomb. She sees the angels. She sees the risen Christ. She speaks to him. She holds on to him. She, she falls at his feet and worships him. And, and she declares that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Peter witnesses uh, the discarded burial clothes as he runs to the empty tomb and he looks inside and he sees uh, all those wrappings and he sees the face covering that's been neatly folded and set aside in, in a separate place. And, and he's an eyewitness and the two disciples who walk down to Emmaus and they experience uh, the, the risen Christ. That They don't recognize him as first, but then, but then they, they they understand this is him. He broke the bread the way that he broke the bread with us in the past. And, and they are eyewitnesses. And they share how they have seen God. And we too, friends, are called 
to be Jesus' witnesses. You will be my witnesses. It is Easter. We are continuing to celebrate Easter. It's the second Sunday of the season. So friends, how has Jesus shown up in your life? How has God done a mighty work in your life? Where have you seen God recently? In which of your friends maybe even uh, are, you, are you feeling that nudge? I need to call out to that person. I need to ring them up. I need to send them a text message. I need to FaceTime with them. I need to get on a video chat with them because I miss them because the Holy Spirit, God has put that person's name on my heart and I feel like this is who I need to witness to. Who are those people? Who is God calling you to, to reach out to right now? And how has God shown up to you this past week? However, you have witnessed God at work in this world through this crisis that we're living through, through this pandemic that is, is continuing to take lives and, and through the stress it's continuing to, to put on families uh, near and far. How have you seen God at work? However you've seen God at work, I pray that you will be as bold as those first disciples when you declare to the nations how you've seen God, that you will be a witness to the power of Jesus Christ because this good news, right, the gospel that's been given to us, the good news is too good to keep to ourselves. When you feel embarrassed, which, I, you know, this is something I hear when, when folks say, I can't evangelize, I can't, like, I feel weird inviting my friends to church, or I really don't know where to start, like, I don't know where to, to even begin talking about my faith. Friends, when you feel embarrassed, or when you feel unsure of what to say or how to say it, just remember that Jesus has given us the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. You'll speak the language that you've been called to speak, whether that is, again, one of those love languages, whether that's through your creativity, or whether that's just simply sending a text to somebody who, who needs to hear that you love them, that you've been thinking about them, that you're praying for them, and that you want them to be a part of this community, even this online community that we have right here. Lord, Lord, please help us to reach out and to share this good news because your Holy Spirit has rained down on us and there is a spark of the divine living in you and there's a spark of the divine living in me. And so friends, I pray that you would not hide that, but that you would let your light shine for all the world to see. What's the song that, that we're taught at Vacation Bible School or in Children's Church, right? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, right? Let your light shine and share that message that you have on your heart right now with others. Because with the Holy Spirit, you will be able to share what God has done. You will be able to testify and to be a witness to the ways that Jesus has shown up in your life. And you'll be able to share that good news that Jesus' resurrection happened on Easter Sunday. And, and, and that his love for us is real and that he overcame death and that there is eternal life and that it's been promised for us and it's been sealed up in the promise of Jesus and that he did ascend and that he does watch over us and that we do have the Holy Spirit. And when you share that, there's no telling the power that it will have in someone else's life. And there's no telling how many others will come to know Jesus because of you. And because you, on this day, decided it is time for me to be a witness. I will be Jesus' witness, and I will share the message that he's put on my heart with the countless people that I can reach right now online or through a telephone call or by email or, or even with my own family members who maybe feel like they're isolated or that they're not a part of some, some bigger web of connections because, friends, again, this is our faith community. And it's up to us to share the good news of Easter with our friends. The, the story did not end on Easter Sunday, right? We're, we're jumping into the sequel. We're in the book of Acts, right? We're looking at the Acts of the Apostles. And so as we look at Acts 1, 3, 11, and we consider everything that takes place after that with, with Peter, with the original apostles, with, with Paul, and with all of those who would come to hear the gospel message, I pray that you will act as boldly as they did and that you will be Jesus' witness in your own town and in, in the place where you live and, and even to those that maybe they, they don't know that they need to hear this yet because ultimately this is good news that's meant for the entire world.
I pray that you'll be a witness. I hope that you'll continue to pray for me as I witness in, in, in the languages that God's blessed me with. And I pray that together we'll continue to invite others to share in this online faith community. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, we're going to sing one final song together now. We hope that this time together online has been a blessing to you. And just as a reminder, if you would like to support our online ministry at Peace Tree, please text the word PEACE to 77977. We invite you now to hear this final song uh, that you would join your voices together in your homes uh, as we sing together or that you would simply let uh, the, the lyrics to this be your prayer for this morning. Remember to say hello to others in the chat. Let let us know where you are joining uh, us this morning. Last week on Easter Sunday, we had friends who live close by, a, a lot of people from Tennessee and Mississippi and Arkansas, but we also saw people online with us from South Carolina and Colorado and North Dakota. So uh, remember to say hello to us in the chat. Uh, we hope that you'll continue to support our ministries, and we invite you now to hear this final song. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you leave me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them, they turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them, who shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you leave me. I will hold your people in my I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them, who shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you leave me. I will hold your people in God bless y'all. We miss seeing each and every one of you. We hope that you'll, you are continuing to uh, check in on your neighbors, on your family members, on your friends, uh, and that you're keeping up with one another. Remember that if there's any way that we can support you or that we can pray for you this week, if you have a prayer concern or a request, send it to us uh, by email at prayer at peacetree.church. And, and remember to connect with us online, to get social with us on Facebook and on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, please, again, like and share this video if you haven't done so already. 
everybody. God bless you. Uh, take care. We hope to see you next week as we continue in uh, the sequel to the Gospels, right? We're going to continue in the book of Acts, and we're going to start this new series the right way, the Acts of the Apostles. We hope to see you this Wednesday for our online Bible study, and we'll see you next Sunday at 10 a.m. Central. Take care, goodbye, and God bless.